yes so coming to the point of malignant gcd so we know that uh, there's a lesion and uh, in the lungs sometimes you see this tumors going and having lung nodules so when you see this many times even oncologists they discuss with me and they feel like is it a sarcoma when you see the lung nodules or what is malignant GCT is it same as uh, sarcomatous transformation in the GCT or it is a sarcoma or it is a simple GCT which may go to the lung so everything depends upon the biopsy and this is very important that uh, the musculoskeletal uh, pathology should evaluate it carefully so normally like I said the evaluation protocol includes your diagnosis which is diagnosis which is your clinical radiological and histopathological correlation then you have your staging workup and then your treatment plan so when you do the diagnosis and you have giant cell tumor so and on staging workup say you have done a chest x-ray and you have seen lung nodules so now you are confused whether it should be treated as a sarcoma or it is it's, it is like a normal GCT with lung metastasis. So please take the help of a good musculoskeletal pathologist who will be able to identify and tell you whether it is a routine GCT with lung metastasis which may be present in 1.5 to 3 percent of the cases or it is a malignant GCT or GCT with sarcomatous transformation. So what do we mean by a malignant GCT? So any GCT with lung nodules is not a sarcomatous GCT. It may be a, a routine GCT which where the metastasis has happened. When we deal with a malignant GCT, so suppose there is distal femur and you have the tumor here. So what they mean by this a malignant GCT is where the sarcomatous component is in juxtaposition is in juxtaposition to the uh, giant cell tumor or when it has the sarcoma has developed in a pre-existing lesion of the giant cell tumor so let us see what does it mean like a malignancy the primary and the secondary and why it is important so when it is a malignant GCT you have to treat it on the lines of a conventional sarcoma which is like a osteosarcoma you have to give chemotherapy and then you should plan your surgery but when it is a, a GCT with no sarcomatous component but with a lung nodule it is just treated like how you treat a routine GCT and the lung nodules you have to see whether they are resectable non resectable and depending upon that you might have to give adjuvant treatment and which depends upon the symptomatology of the patient if the patient is symptomatic for the lung nodules then you might have to add denizumab uh, which will help in containing the lesions uh, and prevent their growth and even shrink the lesions or when it is symptomatic you might have to resect it if it is resectable but most of the times when it is involving the lung the lung nodules are very uh, I, whatever we have seen that it has very large lesions or very multiple lesions when it is not resectable then you may have to give palliative radiotherapy to these lesions or uh, when some some lesions are more symptomatic then you might have to do angioembolization of those lesions and uh, even uh, ready frequency ablation can be done so that is a separate topic altogether uh, but let me first cover this about the malignant GCT what is the primary malignant GCT when it arises in juxtaposition to the giant cell tumor which means you have this tumor it has the soft uh, the tumor component and in some part you see that there is a sarcoma component also present so this is the primary malignant GCT I've mentioned it it is different from a giant cell rich sarcoma which means suppose there can be osteosarcoma which has multiple giant cells so that is a totally uh, it is a separate entity the histology is actually a giant cell rich sarcoma like osteosarcoma the secondary GCT is uh, when it has occurred secondarily very interest uh, is the, uh, it explains in itself and like sometimes when uh, not now but previously 
probably say 20 25 years back i see some cases uh, where gct was operated some 30 35 years back and then that time they used to give radiotherapy also so now they have a recurrence again in the same site so that is a secondary gct and it is it is a secondary uh, sarcoma which has arises on the place of a gc that is secondary malignant gct in these situations we have to treat them like a sarcoma so let us see uh, one example how we deal with this like this was a young gentleman who presented to me with this lesion if you see here in the ileum there is a lesion which is arising and it is a grade 3 lesion where uh, there is extra osseous component on the mri you can differentiate it better you can see it is arising from the iliac bone and with the large soft tissue component somehow he uh, went to some hospital and lost to follow up and then he presented to me again after six months but now the swelling had increased dramatically and here what we can see that uh, it has reached up to the you can see the rib cage it has gone inside and he also developed a large uh, renal stone and you see clinically so this was a highly vascular tumor and we can see that there are dilated veins on the abdomen what you can see it here and he had difficulty in even walking and he was emaciated continuous uh, there was fall of hemoglobin which has reached up to six and the tumor was highly vascular so even on palpation there was a localized warmth and you can see all the dilated veins on the surface so in this situation uh, if you operate up front in this the tumor is very large and sometimes it is uh, highly vascular and the chances of bleeding uh, there was excessive bleeding uh, and when in this situation it is mostly a jelly like uh, the architecture and the chances of spillage etc so we started him on uh, denizumab which is a rank ligand inhibitor and now you can see this is the initial x-ray when we started and um, this was almost after six doses you can see this uh, ossification and uh, this is after nine dose when we saw that the mass had ossified well and uh, then we decided to go ahead with the surgery so uh, so you can see it here this is the standard utilitarian approach we plan for internal hemipelvectomy which means uh, we remove the part of the pelvis while preserving the limb uh, which is a limb salvage procedure and uh, you can see with this we have identified and protected all the major vessels and then we resected this tumor which was more than 30 centimeter around and this is the post-operative x-ray so 